What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, Spartans of all ages, Joker back again once again and today people, today I'm gonna need a moment because um, let me tell you, this is all very, very hot. So we're going to be talking about Halo Infinite's multiplayer. We're going to do a little bit of a breakdown, a deep dive, some general thoughts and discussion about what I've seen, talking about some of the relevant information out there that we've received from the devs since the initial Halo Infinite announcement. All that hot, thick, sticky, sweaty Halo goodness. Now the first gameplay teaser trailer opens with a Spartan sliding, and then it goes into Spartan sprinting! Ah uh, yes, enhanced mobility. The bane of, I want to say half the Halo community, but I think it's actually more than half. The great schism that started in Halo Reach, along with features like Bloom that outright killed competitive Halo, but hey! Those details and why are we fucking them? A feature that every game that has had has been doomed to fail. Ah uh, yes. Yes, enhanced mobility has been the single thorn in Halo's side since time immemorial, but everybody keeps asking for it. But nobody seems to support the games it's in. Hmm. The Joker! I hear you cry in your shrill, tremulous voice. Spartan should be able to sprint! It just makes sense! And you know what? I'd agree. If any Halo that had Sprint had the same lifespan of the Halos that didn't have Sprint. Sprint often comes off as a feature that people clamber for, that people want, that people need, that people desire, that they got to got to have. But when they get it, they abandon the game for the next shiny thing, leaving the old guard holding a bag that they never wanted. Which is why enhanced mobility in Halo is so divisive, because you have people argue for it for the sake of, I guess, having it, because it really doesn't add anything, regardless of how it affects the Halo experience, and then they abandon the game when they get what they asked for, leaving a Halo for the old guard that they don't want either. So in the end, no one is happy. I see a lot of people criticize those who don't want enhanced mobility in Halo, as not wanting to see Halo evolve. Okay, then why has every Halo with enhanced mobility died nearly out of the gate? Why have they not been competitive? Why? Why aren't you supporting it? Why aren't you playing it? Why aren't you building a base for it? Why are you abandoning it? Why? If enhanced mobility is so necessary for the evolution of Halo as a franchise, then why don't you support it? You ask for it, you get it, and then you leave the game. That said, when I talk about how enhanced mobility has damaged the Halo franchise, I'm largely talking about Halo Reach and Halo 4. Halo 5 is kinda sort of its own little interesting beast. It still damaged Halo gameplay at its core, but it does have a bit of a skill gap in how it's done that. I do think that Halo 5's enhanced mobility is still damaging to the core aspects of Halo, but if we're going to have to suffer enhanced mobility in a Halo game, you might as well go all out. You might as well, I don't know, embrace the power fantasy of being a Spartan. And I do believe if Halo 5 didn't release as an absolute monstrosity with one of the worst Halo stories ever canonized with barely 30% of the game complete stuffed full of loot boxes and microtransactions, Halo 5 wouldn't have been the disastrous tragedy that it is. But one decent gameplay mechanic in a shit game isn't going to save the game. So where do I sit when it comes to enhanced mobility in Halo Infinite, which is kind of important moving forward for the sake of discussion. If we look at the default arguments against Sprint in Halo, it comes down to a handful of things that are important to Halo. Halo is not a run and gun shooter, it's not Call of Duty, it's not Destiny. Halo has always been about map control, playing methodically, locking your opponents down, controlling power weapons and power ups. Enhanced mobility breaks map control, invalidates vehicles, and allows players to get out of jail free for poor positioning. So it's important when implementing something like Sprint into Halo, you have to ask, what purpose does this serve? If it's nothing more than a press button for ADHD addled children to have a flourish on their screen that implies that they move faster, then it's probably not worth throwing something so caustic into the sandbox. So how do you have Sprint without breaking the core of what Halo is? Now, perhaps this was just tricky editing and we won't really know until we know, but I do think Halo Infinite nailed it. 
So there's a lot of things to talk about when it comes to the movement in Halo Infinite, but from the top down, sprint doesn't seem to be much faster than the base movement speed. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, then what's the point of it? Well, what's the point of sprint ever been? Since maps are often inflated to accommodate it. So technically, you're not getting places faster just by sprinting there, at least comparatively to other Halos. The point of Sprint in Infinite seems to be, yes, a slight movement increase, which might be more noticeable if the maps are designed to accommodate a base movement speed, but not sprint speed. On top of a slight movement speed increase, you also get access to movement abilities slide, and what looked to be a combat dodge, at least in the original gameplay trailer. So in Halo Infinite, it looks like you're sacrificing having your weapon out, which I should note draws and readies way faster than it does in any other Halo game in Halo Infinite to have access to a slide and a possible dodge. Now, that might not sound like a lot on the face of it, but chaining together a sprint slide jump was a huge part of Halo 5's movement skill gap. The other reason I don't think Sprint will be as devastating for Halo Infinite as it was for the other Halo games is because of the base movement speed options. Normal movement speed seems fast, strafe speed seems really fast, and jump height seems to fall in line with more classic Halo games. With Halo Infinite, enhanced mobility seems to be a set of sandbox options as opposed to something just bolted onto a Halo game so people have a button to press and get an animation that makes them think that they're doing something. That said, I could be entirely wrong and in a few months, we could learn that enhanced mobility has claimed yet another Halo game. The trailer goes on and we see Spartan recruits and their new instructor. I'm planning on, no promises, doing a separate video talking about all of the Academy stuff, so I'll save it for then. We move on to a Spartan with a shotgun, engaging another Spartan. And as a Destiny player who has to deal with Felwinner's lie, there's a couple of clips throughout both this video and another one, like this one. Throwing it down, grabbing one off the wall. My this one. That overshield, and then they could take it and use it for themselves. That to me is very... And this one that put a smile on my face. The vision of Arena was all about a tight experience. Because yes, yeah, sure, you do inevitably see a one-tap shotgun, but the shotguns also up the opponent's colon, so there you go. At 14 seconds, we see this colorful cavalcade of Spartans. 343 has gone all in when it comes to character customization. And it looks like 343 has done away with the traditional red versus blue color coatings. To quote 343, to fully support our goals for expanding player expression in Halo Infinite, the team has designed a new friend or foe system for multiplayer games. On a high level, this functions as an outline system that uses different colors to denote friend or foe. These colors are configurable for accessibility purposes and whatever color you assign will match your scoreboard, team bases, and team flags. This isn't depicted in the reveal trailer due to its more cinematic nature, but we'll have more details to share down the road. I really like the idea of being able to pick the color of the outline for your friend and foe. I'm not colorblind, but I use the colorblind settings in Destiny because I notice those HUD effects more than I notice the default ones. We then see the new VK78 Commando picked up off the wall. It looks like this AR will fill that slower firing, harder hitting, longer range AR role, and the MA-40 assault rifle will take the spray and play CQC role, which is cool. At least I hope that's how it works, as Halo's sandbox since Halo 3, and arguably even in 3, has really had an issue with too many weapons that do largely the same thing overcrowding one another. And this only got worse with the introduction of Promethean weapons, which 343 had no clue what to do with. Also, and maybe I'm just missing something, I've noticed that there's no Promethean weapons, which is good because, like I said, Halo is a better experience when it's more boiled down and has a more condensed sandbox. We then see the threat sensor, which is an area of effect support device that periodically pulses and illuminates enemy players within its radius. We then follow our intrepid orange hero who picks up the grapple shot and sails into the sky with it, clutching a cross map, grapple hook, no scope into a 180 back smack, then picks up the power weapon, charges it, and gets a bank shot. Now, this is gonna sound like one of those weird Joker digressions, but I kinda sorta hope assassinations are still in Halo Infinite. It's one of the additions to Halo that I've always enjoyed. On the face of it, it looks like Halo Infinite has a large focus on customization and player expression. Now, of course, the reason that they're doing this is so that they can sell you stuff, which, fine, fair enough, as Halo cosmetics don't affect the game. They're not the point of the game. Don't get me wrong. You look good, you feel good, you play good, but you can also just go into Halo multiplayer as a default Spartan and never buy a cosmetic ever. It's just nice to have. 
And logically speaking, 343 is sitting on a bunch of assassination animations from Halo 5, so they could easily mocap some more or just put Halo 5s into Halo Infinite and be like, unlock this for doing X, Y, and Z. You know, just as long as you don't have to buy them from the cash shop because, well, you already did that in Halo 5. And I hope what we're seeing here in Halo Infinite is kind of like in Halo 5, you had the ability to toggle on and off assassination animations. Player choice is always good when it comes to things like this. So yeah, I, just, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. I just want assassination animations back in Halo. So I think that would be cool. Weird tangent. I know. But of course, ladies and gents, boys and girls, Spartans of all ages, I doubt that my weird assassination tangents are what you're here to hear me talk about. No, of course not. You want my take on Grapple Hook. It's alright. No, really, I think this is a cool piece of tech. And here's the beauty of Grapple Hook being a map pickup. The grapple hook's inherent power, one, incentivizes map flow and map control, because you're going to want to control the grapple hook's spawn. However, does this mean that you're potentially giving up a power weapon or a power position? Second, if the grapple hook turns out to be just too good, 343 can just take it off the map or reduce the number of charges it has. With it not being an inherent player trait or something that the player spawns with, 343 doesn't have to design maps around it. Now that doesn't mean that I don't think there will be spots on maps where you look at it and you go, yup, that was designed for grapple. But at the same time, this doesn't mean that the entire map was designed for grapple. I'm also super interested to see how momentum works with the grapple hook. If I'm say, I don't know, sprint sliding into a lift or nade jump, then grapple, do I keep that momentum and, you know, I don't know, possibly splatter myself against a wall? That'd be kind of funny. The next piece of equipment that we see largely falls in the same category as the grapple, the repulse, aka the no you button. This is something that I'm mildly concerned about only because I'm getting like Halo Reach armor lock flashbacks, but I don't actually think it'll be that bad. The no you example that we see is a plasma bolt, and that's a really dramatic example, but it'll probably reflect rocket launchers and nades and other things like that. But how effective is that going to actually be in moment to moment combat against an assault rifle or a battle rifle? The more interesting use for the repulsor seems to be as a movement piece of kit, as we see here. Gives is super amazing. Looking at how the power ups play, like your classic power ups, like the over. The next piece of Halo customization that we see is your very own personal AI, a sort of superintendent buddy that I'm probably way more excited about than I should be. I don't know, it just kind of reminds me of how like in Titanfall 1, you could change the voice of your Titan, or in how Titanfall 2, each Titan had its own personality. I do hope, however, that the level of engagement your AI buddy partakes in is customizable, as a really chatty AI could get super annoying super quick, more so when you have the announcer going 10 seconds till sniper spawn, or double kill, overkill, triple kill, and then you also have party chat and in-game chat, then you have this AI, I, th I think that would be a little much. And go from cute little customization gimmick to annoying, quick fast in a hurry. At 108, we see a Valhalla looking big team battle map. Not much to say about this other than, hey, big team battle is now 12v12 and that that's not actually ordnance. That's just a standard weapon spawn, only more cinematic. The only other interesting thing I note about Big Team Battle is that vehicles have been overhauled. There's now even like a doomsday mode to them. Basically, you know when you're about to die so you can either get out or try to take somebody out with you. And yeah, that's kind of it. We get a montage of weapons doing stuff and or things, but it's always really hard to judge the power of a weapon until you're actually using it. See basically every Destiny exotic trailer ever. We end on a really cool set of clips featuring the Hayabusa 2.0 armor or whatever it's called. In another video, 343 stated that this new samurai armor will be free, earned through an in-game event. I'll do another video, maybe no promises, breaking down the way that Halo Infinite plans to be monetized. But, but so far they're saying all the right things like lots of armor to unlock through challenges and events, never expiring battle passes, not allowing you to buy things in the cash shop that are tied to the battle pass. And if the customization content ends up being a little more pricey on the front end, the fact that Halo Infinite is free to play does kind of make up for that in my mind. All in all, it does look like a return to form for Halo, but only time will tell. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Remember to like, but only if you did, subscribe for more. Feel free to donate to my Patreon if you're feeling particularly generous, but above all else, stay frosty.